I'm really happy that I did not build this truck when I first brought the wagon body home. If I had done that, this wagon would have an LS1 underneath the hood, it would be sitting on some big axles and some big tires, and I would have wheeled the heck out of it, and it would just be, it would look like a beer can on four wheels at this point, it'd be written off. And I would have destroyed this Willie's wagon that I love so much. I think by having it around the shop for like four or five years, I've been able to really sort of mull over how I want to build this rig, in particular the power plant. You know, you've got to remember these, these wagons, these willies, the wagons or the pickup trucks, even the little Jeeps, they didn't, they came with small little four cylinder engines from the factory. And the good news is, is now there is a four cylinder crate engine available and I can pick it up right up the street. It's gonna be awesome. I'm gonna pick up the engine for the Willys wagon at my local Cummins service center. Now normally when you think about Cummins engines, you think about large displacement, high mileage, high torque engines that power everything from RVs to 18 wheelers or even school buses. But I'm here to pick up an R2.8 four cylinder crate engine package. This is the perfect power plant for my Willys wagon. Today I need to assemble the drivetrain in the wagon just to finish out all the sheet metal. Behind the R2.8, I'm using a Tremec TR4050 from Silver Sport Transmission, and I'm using a quick draw bell housing to get them bolted up together. I talked to a lot of people running this engine and they suggest rubber engine mounts just to prevent vibration from getting into the chassis. Once they're bolted up to the block, I'll put the quick draw bell housing onto the back and then the engine is lowered into the chassis. I'm gonna locate it by setting the balancer on a jack stand at the front and then another jack stand at the back just to keep the engine in place. I'm gonna offset the engine one inch towards the passenger side of the rig. That just helps with drive shaft clearance up front. Trans can then be bolted up and the body is lowered down over the entire drivetrain. I gotta build some frame side motor mount plates. I'll just cut them out on the fast cut CNC table. And once I get them all mocked up and tacked together, it goes in for one final test fit before I pull it back out and finish welding. With a transfer case in place, now I can go ahead and build the transmission mount. One thing that you do need to pay attention to, especially on these diesel engines, is my motor mounts are rubber, and so I'm just gonna be using a rubber transmission mount as well. You don't wanna use poly with these things, it just puts too much vibration into the frame. And I'm actually gonna build the entire mount off of the existing heavy duty JK cross member that's underneath this rig already. Cut the plates for the transmission mount and I'll bolt it onto the mount before welding them onto the cross member. The motor's pretty much exactly where I want it to be, but the mounts are still just tacked onto the frame. Before I burn those mounts on for good, I need to check a couple of things. These are things you need to check 
whenever you put an engine in something that you haven't put it in before. First thing I gotta do is check for suspension clearance. So I'll raise the truck up, pull out all of the springs, and then lower the suspension down until it is at what's called full stuff. That means that this would be where the suspension would be at its highest upward travel. If everything clears then, then we're gonna articulate the front axle just to keep an eye on those front upper control arm mounts. If that's good, then we can finally replace our cardboard transmission tunnel with some real steel. No real trick here, just a whole bunch of work taking each piece of cardboard off the mock-up, transferring the measurements to the 18 gauge sheet, cutting it out on the plasma table, welding it into place. I'll add a couple beads just to make the transmission tunnel match the rest of the floor. I am very happy to finally have a drivetrain in between the frame rails of this JK frame for this Willys wagon and even more excited that it's the Cummins R2.8. I have been looking for a project to put this engine in for a while and this honestly I think is the perfect one. Setting it back in the firewall, definitely the right decision, just fits in there perfectly and then mating it up to a manual transmission I think really fits this build all the way around. You know what? This is gonna be just an awesome rig. I can't wait to get it done. We are one step closer to getting this 53 Willys wagon back on the road. We'll see you next time here in the Big Tire Garage. Wow.